I think it goes without saying that I absolutely love plants and in today's video we will talk about pothos. If I remember correctly, I started collecting house plants almost 8 years ago and golden pothos was my first house plant. Ever since my collection has grown, I will show you 5 different varieties of pothos that I have in my collection. So I have neon pothos, pearl and jade pothos, golden pothos, global green pothos and right here is marble green pothos. Now let's talk about lighting. Pothos can survive in low light but they will thrive in medium to bright indirect light. If they are getting morning or evening direct sunlight that is fine but make sure they are not exposed to that afternoon harsh sunlight because that can burn their leaves. And I have an example right here. So I was propagating these pothos into the soil and I kept that nearby the window and as you can see, let me just take it out, this leaf got burned because of the direct sunlight so make sure they are not exposed to that harsh sunlight in the afternoon. So these pothos right here, I grew them last year from the cutting and look at the growth on this one. It's not even one year and it's like almost 5 feet long wine. And right here is my marble green pothos. As you can see, the bottom leaves, they are larger than the leaves right here on the top of the pot because this part doesn't get direct sunlight and the vines get direct sunlight in the morning. So they are pretty big, see? So right here is my global green pothos. When I first got these pothos, the variation was really good. And then I kept this on bookshelf and this part of the plant was not getting enough sunlight and it started producing the leaves without variation compared to this wine. Look at the variation on this one and this one has like none. So I think I will have to move this plant into a brighter spot where it gets more sunlight and hopefully it will start producing more leaves with variation. Similarly to global green bottles, enjoy bottles or pearl and jade bottles will also need bright indirect light to maintain their beautiful variation on the leaves and also neon bottles to maintain the neon color they will need bright indirect sunlight. Now let's talk about watering. Watering bottles is really easy. There are many ways to know if your bottles need water or not. First is you will need a chopstick or a wooden stick. You just have to insert it into the soil. If it comes out dry and clean, it means it needs water. I think I need to water my global green here. And now let's check this one. So if it comes out wet and if you see the soil is sticking onto the stick, that means that it doesn't need water. So you can skip watering that plant. The second way to check is to use this moisture meter. If you are interested buying it, I will share the link in description below. So make sure you check that out. You simply just insert it into the soil. And as you can see, it's the arrow is showing on the dry. So that means it needs water and let's check out this one. As you can see, it's showing that the soil is moist. That means it doesn't need water. So this is the second way to check the soil if it needs water or not. So third way is really easy, inexpensive way to know if your plant needs water or not. You don't need anything fancy. You just need your pot and your finger. You just stick your finger halfway inside the pot and see if your finger comes out clean. That means it needs water and I think I need to water my plant. <laughs> so it only works for the small pot like this. For bigger pot like this, I would not recommend using your finger because your finger cannot go that deep to see if the soil is wet or dry. So make sure you use chopstick or a moisture meter to see if your plant needs water and to avoid overwatering issue. So keep that in mind. The third way to check if your plant needs water is right here. I have best example. I haven't watered this plant for two weeks. It's not dying, so don't worry. I will water it. So as you can see, the leaves are all wilted. You see this one? So when the leaves are wilted, that means it needs water. 
so make sure when you see this kind of leaf you water your plant let's move on to soil mix Potholes generally grow fine in regular potting mix but I personally don't like them because the potting mix you get it from outside is peat based which retains moisture for a really long time and it can cause a root rot. Second is it get compacted pretty quickly so you have to repot again and again and I don't like that. So I personally make my own soil mix for my house plants which contains orchid bark, perlite, worm casting. So it's really chunky, well draining, it has a good aeration and it has all the nutrients my plants need. And if you are also looking for any soil amendments or soil mix for your house plants, please check out my Etsy shop and I will share the link in description below. Now let's talk about plant food. Pothos generally grow fine without being fertilized. But if you want your plant not to just grow but flourish, make sure you are giving them enough nutrition. To fertilize my house plant, I use foliage pro liquid plant food. I just use one cap full of fertilizer in one gallon of water and I give them fertilizer whenever I see a new growth on my plants. If your plant is sitting in a pot for a long time, it's gonna run out of all the nutrition. So make sure you give them fertilizer or you can make your own fertilizer by composting or you can use worm casting. And I have already shared a video about how you can use worm casting on my YouTube channel. I'll share the link over here, so make sure you check that out. Propagating pothos is really easy and affordable way to fill up your house. And now I will show you how you can propagate pothos. To propagate pothos, first you need to find a vine that you want to cut from the mother plant. So I will be cutting this vine right here and I'm going to make a cut right above where the leaf is coming out. So this is the vine I will be propagating. So don't worry about the cut you just made because there will be new growth coming out from that vine from right here. Make sure you are using a clean scissor or pruner, for example, I'm using this. First, you need to find a node and finding node is really easy. Node is where the leaf and the aerial root is coming out from. So this is a node, this is a node, this is a node and you get the idea. So you need to make a cut one centimeter above and below the node. So I'll be cutting from right here and then here. Don't worry about this part, you can throw that out. So now that your cuttings are ready, what you will need is propagation station or a jar or a glass full of water. If you want to buy this propagation station, you can check out my Etsy shop and I will share the link in description below. So make sure you check that out. When placing your cuttings into the water, make sure the nodes are submerged in water because that is where the new roots are coming from. Now the hardest part is patiently wait for roots to grow and your propagation is ready. Now look at these roots. These cuttings are ready to transfer in soil. If you want to grow them just in water, you are more than welcome to do it. But they will not get enough nutrition from the water only, so I recommend them transferring into the soil. I forgot to mention that when the water gets cloudy, make sure you change the water. Make sure you are placing your cutting somewhere warmer and in a good light, not in a direct sunlight. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.